All right, we're going to do this again. This is the final uh, review of the Stellar X2, and um, we're going to go from there. So um, I just wanted to go ahead. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let you know that the, all the recording is from the Focusrite, and it's plugged in, and this is raw audio. No compression, no no nothing. This is ex exactly how the microphone sounds, and uh, let me just put on the pop filter and uh, go from there. So let me go ahead and talk about this microphone and what my thoughts are on it. Um, so... I bought this microphone with my own money out of curiosity because there's a lot of hype saying that this microphone sounds like a Neumann U87 or that it's just like the $200 mic that is a Neumann U87. And I know the Neumann U87. I've heard it in studios. I have a friend who has one. I borrowed it. I've used it. Um, and I've come to the conclusion that the Neumann U87, in my opinion, sounds almost identical to the Neumann TLM 103 in cardioid mode. Um, but... I used to rule the world. I used to rule the world. This microphone, I wanted to go ahead and check it out. And, and here's my thoughts. From my reviews and doing some tests with, I mean, I've been testing this thing for about the next, the past three days. This microphone um, is not an Neumann U87. But it's a good microphone for $200. That's what I want to say. But I want people to understand that it's not an Neumann U87. It's, in my opinion, it's a Rode NT1. And and you can, I mean, you can basically check online with all the reviews that compare it with the NT1. They sound very similar. Um, what I do want to say is this. This microphone, um, I think in general, it tends to favor folks who have more of a deeper tone to their voice. So I'm kind of more of a tenor. So this microphone doesn't really suit my voice in general. Um, that's the one thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is when it comes to the reviews of this microphone, um, you've got to be really careful about the reviews that are on there because a lot of the reviews, reviews that are on there, they were given the microphone for free. I wasn't given this microphone for free. This was, I just bought this because I'm curious and um, I wanted to know how it sounds. But the other thing too is even amongst the people who are putting up reviews, it's actually not a fair and objective review because what's going on is they are basically, so, okay, this microphone is $200. People who are going to buy this microphone are not going to spend $3,000 on a preamp. People who are buying this microphone are not going to buy an Apollo Twin, which is like $700, and spend like all these, this, you can spend up to close to $600 on plugins. Um, because let me tell you, when you put those on, you are not listening to this microphone. You are listening to those plugins. And what you're going to realize is that that, what, that doesn't sound like what you're actually going to get. What you're actually getting is this right here. And if you look at the reviews, by podcast stage, he's using the Focusrite 2i2, same as me. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and play his recordings really shortly. There's another guy. His name is Blanket Force Studio. I mean, his channel is Blanket Force Studio. He's using a Focusrite. He's not using any expensive preamps. He's not using any. His audio sounds like this. There's another person there. What I'm going to do is just pretty much right after this is um, show you recordings of how people sound when they don't use any fancy shit. They're when they're just only using just standard stuff. And... Pretty much, this is gonna. This is how the microphone is gonna sound. Okay, let me just. And I've got this plugged into my focus right here on the. I've got it plugged into the focus right here on my on my table in front of me, and it's. I mean, it's got. It's got a lot of sound. It, I mean, it's really. It, it... Movie trailer voice voiced by one man. It has come to a point in my career where it really doesn't matter what I say. Basically, you'll listen, I'll speak, and everyone is freaking happy. So that's uh, dry. Let's go ahead and produce it and see what it sounds like. The gain set just at around 1130. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost the audio in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. <clears throat> All right, so that's the first thing I want to say. The next thing I want to say is that this microphone, um, the 6 to 8 inch rule or the hang loose rule, if you do that in this microphone, it's going to sound really thin. Most microphones, like, so if I use my, um, for instance, if, if I use my Cat Equitec 100S, right, and I basically, um, if I record 6 to 8 inches away or I use the hang loose, it still will pick me up and it doesn't sound thin. This microphone, you're going to sound, it sounds, I'm going to show you, right? But before I show you this, let me at least show you how the room is treated um, because it, it's not really... It's not really a bathroom in here, right? So I'm going to show you guys right now. Um, I basically have all around me, around the microphone, 
I have really, really tall homemade acoustic panels. These are six inches thick of, of rock wool. And they are, these are basically um, body pillow covers. I know this is, but you can make these acoustic panels in like one hour. And they sound pretty much identical to the, the ones that, peop that people spend money on or spend like days on to make. And you can make that in like, I mean, seriously, they, it sound it sounds identical. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just that you can make this in like an hour because that's the thing about acoustic panels. Acoustic panels either cost a lot of money or they're just a fuck ton of time to make, right? It's like there's tons of tutorials on how to make acoustic panels, but like it's just a lot of work to make. Like you've got to get glue, you've got to get um, drills, you've got to get like a saw, you've got to get wood, you've got to get a, like measurements, you've got to get like, you know, you've got to get it's just like, oh my God. It's just a whole lot easier. You just, all you do, and I'm going to go ahead and post um, the tip below, I mean, um, a primer below. All you need is just go ahead and get some rock wool fiber, I mean, um, rock wool or thermo fiber from from Home Depot, get like a big stack of these. You can get, you can make like, it gives you enough to make about six of them. Um, six of them at six inches thick. And um, what you do is, all you do is just get go to Amazon and buy the Evo Live. Um, basically, you want to just buy a um, body, bill, body pillow cover with a zipper on it. And all you do is just stuff it in there, man. You stuff it in there and you zip it up and you wipe off all the excess and just post it up. And dude, it gives you really good sound treatment. But anyway, Back on topic. <laughs> um, so this microphone, when you basically speak about one hang loose away, it's going to sound, you just got to just, uh, I wish I could like show you, like show that I'm like really, I really am like hang one hang loose away. This is how the audio sounds and it sounds really, really thin, right? Um, however, I'm going to show you another clip right really shortly that the um, Cat Equitech 100S, which is right here, it, you can speak one hang loose away from that microphone and it's, it doesn't sound thin. It sounds good. But this microphone, it doesn't have a proximity effect. That's the problem with this. It just doesn't have much of a bass response. So that's the issue with this microphone. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. Right now, I am doing a comparison of how they both sound when you're a little bit past six inches away from the microphone. So this is a comparison between the Stellar X2 and the Cat Equitec 100S. Mic check one two three. Mic check one two three. Right now, I am doing a comparison of how they both sound when you're a little bit past six inches away from the microphone. So this is a comparison between the Stellar X2 and the Cat Equitec 100S. All right. So the last thing I want to do is to talk about audio interfaces and how they affect the sound of the voice when you use any microphone. So if you want to know as much as you can about the Stellar X2, let's go ahead and do a test where we do an audio clip of every single audio interface here and how it sounds with a Stellar X2 because that's going to provide you with a lot of information on what probably works better. Little nuances, it's even hard because of YouTube compression, but I'm going to show you the Zoom H4n Pro, the Audient ID4, the Rode AI1, the Babyface Pro, the Zoom F6, and the Stellar X2, and obviously the Scarlett, which I'm recording off right now. This is audio from the Scarlett 2i2 connected to the Stellar X2. This is audio from the Babyface Pro connected to the Stellar X2. This is the Stellar X2 connected to the Solid State Logic 2. And now this is how it sounds with 4K mode enabled. This is audio from the Stellar X2 connected to the Rode AI1. This is audio from the Stellar X2 connected to the Zoom F6. This is audio from the Zoom H4n Pro connected to the Stellar X2. This is the same preamps as the Zoom H5 and the Zoom H6. This is audio from the Audient ID4 connected to the Stellar X2, and this is how it sounds. All right, so final thoughts on this microphone. Does this sound like a Neumann U87? So, uh, as I mentioned before, I don't think it does. I think it actually is closer to a Rode NT1, but let me kind of give you my thoughts. So, I think a Neumann U87 sounds really similar to a TLM 103, but what sounds similar to a TLM-103, it's the Cat Equitec 100S, this guy right here. This microphone sounds really similar, really, really similar to the TLM-103. There's jokes about this where people will say, buy the E100S, buy the TLM-103, and then sell the, sell the 103. And people are like, literally like, this is the, if you can't afford a TLM-103, get this microphone instead. And <clears throat> I honestly believe that, actually. I actually have, 
I've, I've A-B'd them side by side. And I pretty much was just like, I'm just going to just use this. This is all I need. This is all I need. And I can say with certainty that any voice actor who has a has a um, CAD Equitech 100S, it's like I get so happy when I see their recordings because it's always super good. In my testing, my limited testing, um, I have I do notice that that the E100 and the they they sound very close to each other. They're very similar sounding microphones, which for the price point, I mean, it's uh, you know that that's pretty good. I do find that the the Neumann does tend to um, have a better bass response. In some of my other videos, I've actually if you're looking for um, something that is going to be as close to the U87 as, as possible, it's not this mic. You want to get this mic instead. Um, and like I said, I'm going on a, on a tangential basis, right? What sounds close to the Neumann U87? The Neumann TLM-103. What sounds close to the Neumann TLM-103? Well, between these two right here, go, the, go for this one. Because that actually sounds like, um, in my opinion, closer to the Neumann TLM-103. However, let me go ahead and show you something else that I kind of think, think as well. Think about this from a point of logistics. People say that the U87 is a slightly bassier version of the TLM-103. This is a little bit less bassier than the TLM-103. But this is bassier than this microphone. Then that means if this is bassier than this, and that's bassier than that, and that's bassier than that, <laughs> then this means that this doesn't sound like a U87 is what I'm saying. So that's my two cents. Um, and uh, we're done. Okay, bye.